everyone, how are you? And welcome to a showcase for the Terracaeus mod. Now, Terracaeus is an extensive mod. It's the type of mod that you can use as the only mod in addition to your gameplay, and it will satisfy most of your needs because that's how extensive it is. For some reason, not many people know about this mod, which is why I'm making this showcase. And so I want to talk to you guys about the different tools that are available, the different types of trees that are available, the different structures that you can find, the food, the magic. There's just so much involved in this mod pack. And first and foremost, we're going to touch on this adorable village over here because one of the terracase structures is actually over here, which is wonderful. And it's the pergola. Now these are things that can be found right inside a Minecraft vanilla village. They just spawn right alongside it. And although this one doesn't quite fit in as beautifully as they usually do, generally speaking, these do blend in quite nicely. I've found them in a lot of uh, um, sandstone villages and they've been fine. So one thing that you will notice here too is that if you right click on wherever these little grapes are, you can actually pick them, and you can eat them too if you want to, and these vines grow naturally on these pergolas when the structure generates. So this is an option for you. You can harvest these with the vines with silk touch, and you'd be able to plant this at home. The pergolas are craftable as well, so you'll see here these are all the different parts and pieces. You can make gates, you can make the walls, the um, ceiling as well. So you have all of this available to you, and you can definitely do different colors as well, which is very nice. And Terracase also comes with um, a variety of wood textures and the whole nine yards, too, So, and different dyes. And When I say it's extensive, I'm not kidding. It's extensive, so you have all these things here, but that's just the beginning, because believe me, we're going to look at other stuff, too. So this village is pretty general in that sense. These are other, this is part of my mod pack, so there are other things that you're seeing here that are not part of Terracaeus. Um, I'm only going to point out things that are Terracaeus related. Also lucky for us, one of the coconut trees is here too, which is good, because this is just one of the unique trees that comes with this mod. It will drop coconuts over time, and they will fall on the ground, which is adorable and cool because you'll be able to actually click on them and harvest them. And you can just eat the coconut as it is. I'm, I'm not really sure why, but that's how the mod works. <laughs> so that's one thing that you can do. And you can harvest this wood as well. As a matter of fact, there is a coconut there. Yep, oh, it does fall. Good. Yeah, so that will fall. And when you're in survival mode... Let me just switch to survival real quick. Yeah, if you um, left click on that, you'll turn it into a coconut, and I can't eat it now because my hunger bar is full, but um, you act actually are able to just eat the coconut as it is. I can see another one out there too in the distance. Let me see if I can find some other trees because there's more of them. If I can't find them naturally, I will just spawn them for you really quick so that you can see them. But, oh, there's one over there. There's a mango tree. Oh, that's good. So, just like with the other trees and foliage, um, right-clicking on any of the leaves with a uh, full-grown fruit will actually get you the fruit. You can eat these as they are. You don't have to cook them or put them in any special recipes. They, they're, they're pretty um, much what they are. So, we've got pears. Oh, there's so many trees around here. This is wonderful. I get to show you guys so many different kinds. We've got oranges. We've got cherries, which is adorable. We've got more oranges. Is that a peach tree? Please be a peach tree. No, you're an orange tree. Okay. We've got, what is over here? We've got plums. And what are you? Are you another orange tree? Yeah, you are. Well, that's okay. But there's other fruits as well. So let me actually get to the Terracaeus page, which is right over here. So we have lemons, we have the life fruit, which actually grows on a vine just like the grapes. It's extremely rare to find the uh, um, 
life fruit and death fruit vines. I have not found one yet personally. Um, there's no way to modify the spawning of those, so you get lucky or you don't. There's also prickly pears, which you can get from cactuses in the desert biomes. There's pineapples, bananas, which you find in jungles, peaches, which are kind of found sometimes in forests or around uh, um, mountains, but not always. They're, the peaches are a little bit more rare, but the wood is absolutely gorgeous, as a matter of fact. So if I show you the wood, that's what the wood looks like, and that is a really beautiful peachy color. And you also can get doors and trap doors and all of the different types of trees that come with this mod have their own unique wood colors and items as well, which is a beautiful addition. Absolutely beautiful. But that's not all we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about the tools as well, because that's important. So when, let me just land somewhere. I'll put myself near the, um, Frisian cows. These are part of the Animania mod. They're not actually part of Terra Kea, so I just want to point that out. But anyways, so let's get some resources. So we're going to need two sticks. We're going to need... where is it? Oh, wait. I went to the wrong thing. That thing. And we're going to need a couple of these. And the first tool that we're going to make, if I could get my crafting bench... where is it? I'm going to keep that on me for sanity's sake. So anyways, first thing we're going to make is this. And the reason we're making this is because this is the sickle, or the scythe. And the important thing about this is you want it as early as you can get it, because it's great for harvesting seeds. And it's also able to be used as a weapon. So I'll just click on that, and as you guys saw, the two iron, the two string, and then, or the two sticks, and then the string. So... What you do with this is you right-click, and it changes the weapon mode. And that turns it from a scythe into a sickle, and this is actually used as a weapon. Now, if I attack this guy um, in survival mode, he would not be happy with me, but we're not really going to do that. What we are going to do is change it back to a scythe, and you'll see it harvests a huge amount of grass at once. And that is very, very useful for about a thousand different reasons, because there is nothing in this game more annoying than trying to harvest grass. I mean, granted, you're not getting the full experience here. Hold on. Let me switch back to survival. You're not going to be mad at me, are you? Probably not. Okay, so let me find some more grass, because you can also harvest seeds with this. Oh, there we go. There's a seed. It's part of simple corn, but regardless, it's a seed. You will get regular grass seeds as well, and you can use this to harvest um, the flowers as well, and the whole nine yards. One thing, too, as a matter of fact, is I'm sure you guys have noticed these little rocks everywhere, and this is another thing you would definitely want to touch on in the beginning of your game, especially if you're combining this mod with Voidcraft, because it makes everything so much easier for you. But it'll drop like these little lumps of gravel, and it'll drop different dust ores, and you actually use that in crafting and for a variety of different things. Let me see if I can find another thingy here. So you'll get like tiny piles of coal dust if you combine these in a 4x4 four four, um, crafting pattern, you'll actually make coal dust. And some of the dust can be used, some of them can't really be used for anything. Let me switch to daytime, because <laughs> I don't really want to die <laughs> in this episode. That would not be good. So this right here is extremely important, because that has to do with the ender enchanting, or the end enchanting, which is very different from regular enchanting, and it it's slightly the same mechanic, but the benefits are better. But you need the ender dust in order to use your ender table and it's very hard to get that early on. So you're either going to have to kill a lot of Endermen, or you're going to have to find it from these little rocks. But it's nice that you can find it from the little rocks, because if you do manage to get that early on, you have it available to you. It's another Void thing. So anyways, um, that's not all that we're going to touch on, though. As a matter of fact, let me um, find a few other things here that I want to show you guys, because 
there's this block right here, the endymium. And endymium is something that you can only find in the end. That's the only place where you will ever be able to find it. And in addition to that, there is also burnium. And burnium took me a really long time to understand, as well as endymium. I was running around the world thinking to myself, where is this? How do I find this? And then I finally went to the nether and I'm like, oh, it's right there, okay. So, let me turn that off, because I don't actually want to give myself things accidentally, but... There's this multi-tool. This was another thing that was very hard for me to understand, the burnium pick. Like, to me it was just a pickaxe. I thought, okay, that's fine, but uh, it was strange to me how it required the wood and not planks or sticks. It was like, why does it need the wood? And it's because it's a huge tool. It's actually a multi-tool. So if I make this, or if I give this to myself right now, then what you do is you hold down shift and you use your scroll wheel to change the mode. So you can turn it from a pick to a shovel to a hoe to a weapon. And the weapon is pretty obvious, but you could also do the hoe, which is nice obviously for harvest for um, how could I put it? <laughs> for basically making soil out of a very big area, as you can see there. And if I turn this into the pick, and then I go over to a wood air or a, a stone area, you'll see something really awesome. There are two very wonderful things about this. The first thing being how much it harvests. You get nine blocks at a time, but also you get stone. You don't get cobblestone. So it's like auto silk touch, which, you know, if you have, if you get to the end by this point, but you or to the point where you're able to actually have the burnium pick, but you haven't gotten silk touch yet, this is going to make your life so much easier. So that's one of the things about this mod that I absolutely love, the fact that you have these tools available and how powerful this tool is. It's almost like having Tinker's Construct without having Tinker's Construct. But that that is a powerful tool right there. I just want to see what that has. Oh, coal dust. Nice. Oh, that's very nice. I like that. But look at that. I have almost two stacks of stone already. But look, I can make stone bricks. It's so nice. Okay, so another important thing that I want to show you guys, which is something that can be very confusing early on, and I want to make sure that it's not confusing for people, is the Ender Table, which is very similar to the Enchanting Table, but it's a little bit different. So first we have to make the End Book, or the Ender Book, and the way to do that is to combine an Eye of Ender with a book, and then you get the Ender Book. And then you need to make your enchantment table with the same crafting recipe that you would always use, but instead of putting a regular book, you put the ender book. And it gets you the ender table. And it looks exactly the same, but it's not. Because when you put it down, instead, you get this very odd-looking green and yellow book. And when you click on this, you're going to see this whole menu right here. So I'm going to pick out a weapon for myself. I'm just going to give myself a diamond sword, and I'm going to give myself a piece of armor. So what you do, it was, you would put the item in here, and then you would put either between one to three of these ender dust. So if I just want to do this, you know, one ender dust enchantment, I can do that. And it would only cost me six levels. If I want to do, you know, the um, three ender dust enchantment with 18 levels, I can do that. It's not going to take the same amount of levels, but it will require you to have that many levels. And it won't show you the names of each enchantment. When you're doing this, it'll actually just be a bunch of scrambled letters, like the old enchanting system, but basically I'm going to click on this one, and you get Looting 1 and Unbreaking 2, which is very nice. So it does work a little bit different from the old enchanting. Like, it's similar, but it's improved enchantment, so you actually get some really nice things, because Protection 3 is a really good thing to get right off the bat. 
I don't ever remember a time where I ever had it that easy while enchanting in old school Minecrafts. So another very important part to this mod, and probably one of the most important parts in terms of fun alone, is this endymium gives you the power to make a cloud talisman. And the cloud talisman is what you use to actually be able to walk on the clouds, because one thing you'll notice when I click out of this menu for a moment, when you look up at the sky, you're going to see these little clouds up here that are not the same as vanilla Minecraft clouds, and these are harvestable blocks, and you can actually walk on them. So, to make this, you're going to need the baked talisman paste, which is made with just a regular talisman base, which just requires one endymium crystal, and you get that from harvesting the crystals that grow on top of the endymium ore. Any two types of feathers based on whatever mod you're using. The great thing about Terracase is that it tends to be compatible with a lot of other mods, which is wonderful for a thousand different reasons, so it'll accept any feather that's classified as a feather in any mod. And you also need just three pieces of clay, and that's it. So you just combine all of that together, and you get the Assemble Cloud Talisman. But you can't actually do anything with it when it's an Assemble ta Cloud Talisman. Like, if I go into my survival inventory, I can't equip this anywhere. Like, I can equip it in my um, shield slab, but it won't do anything. But you're supposed to be able to equip it where your chest plate goes. So I'll go down here to this. And I'll put this in here, and you infuse it with Ender Energy. And then it becomes the Cloud Talisman. And then you put it on your chest, and you get that little decal right there. So let me actually fly up to a cloud. Now, when I'm in creative mode, I'll automatically be able to walk on the clouds, but we don't want to do that. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put myself in survival mode and I can walk on the clouds. Now if I take that off, this is going to hurt so bad if I let myself fall, but if I take this off, I immediately fall through and I fall to my death. And I am now dead. So sad. Great, because I really don't want to be killed. Uh, that's an infernal mob over there. We don't really want to um, go near him, do we? So let me see if I can find where <laughs> all of my malarkey is, because I've made quite a mess of this world. Oh, there's all my... oh, sort of. Oh, well, it's not important. I don't need all that stuff back, but anyway, so that's generally how that works. Um, one thing, there was something else I wanted to show you guys, too. I mean, there's the earth paintings here, which are pretty cool, but there's also... what was it? Oh, these things. The craft bench. Now, the craft bench is automated crafting, and the same goes for the craft furnace. And it took me a very long time to understand how these two things work, because they are... I don't expect my craft to ever be automated, but these things are automated, so all of those giant smart furnaces that people build in vanilla Minecraft, yeah, you don't have to do that anymore. So, in any case, let me just give myself... Ah! Craft, where are you? There we go. This, I only need one, I don't need 64. I don't know why it gives me 64. That's that's a just enough items thing. I'm, I'm not sure why it does that, but whatever. Anyways, these guys here. And what you do is you actually place a crafting recipe in here, and then all the materials that you need for that crafting recipe you put down here. And the item will actually appear there in that square, and you'd actually remove it. So let me find a crafting recipe that would be really awesome. Actually, cloud... Let's do... Not that, but base. Base. <laughs> Not sea base. So I'll get like a bunch of those. Some feathers. And endymium. 
crystals. Like so. And what you do... Oh, I have two for some reason. Okay, anyways. You'd put one there. Two there like that. And one like that. And then I will leave these items in there like this. And then I can make as many of these as I want. And it's not a um, shift-click type thing. You can't shift and click. You have to do these one at a time. Which is fine, because that's appropriate. Because when you're doing auto-crafting, you don't want to make too many. And that's one of the um, annoying things, I think, about Minecraft, is that sometimes you can't stop yourself from making too many things. So that's the automated crafting right there. And the same goes for the furnace. Items go in, and then items come out, and I'm actually not going to tell you guys how to do that. I'm going to let you figure that out, out on your own, because the way that this works... Oh, hit the wrong button, sorry. The way this works, and the way this works, same thing, pretty much. So, there you go with that, and that's a baby creeper over there. He's so cute. Anyway, so that's basically all that I'm going to tell you for the Terrakeus mod, and I will have a link in the description to where you can download the mod and also a link to my mod players where I'm using this entire mod pack in my Terra Void series. I have a link to where you can actually download the mod pack if you want to play with it on your own in the description of the mod playlist. So anyways, all of those links, everything you need to know will be right down in the description. So I want to thank you guys very much for watching. I hope this is very informative. These are just the little bits and pieces of the Terrakeus mod. I'm not touching on every single part, but I'm touching on the parts that I think are the most challenging to understand. So in that case, I want to thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed, and if you did, then uh, feel free to subscribe, comment, and like if you want to see more. So, as always, I will see you guys next time.